Okay guys, today we're gonna to be talking about how I run a revolver in bear country. Now, a lot of you guys might see the Desert Eagle on my chest occasionally, but I usually alternate between the Desert Eagle and a revolver in bear country. And we'll get into different videos more of why I choose which and which I like more. Uh, that, those will be topics for later discussion, though I will talk a little bit about revolvers and running them in bear country. But I thought uh, today I would do a kind of breakdown because you guys probably see me walking around in the different videos or even just sitting using tools and stuff and you see the revolver and I thought I'd break it down a little bit more and explain how exactly I run it. So without any further ado, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, and check out the Patreon and Instagram. The support means a ton. So first off, we'll get into a little bit of why I run a revolver for Bear Country. And first off, this is of course a Smith & Wesson Model 29. I will probably be getting another 44 Magnum in the future or in the near future, but the 29 is what I have right now. It's a good old fashioned 19, I think 1960s or 1970s vintage, but it is still fully effective. Still, you know, shoots obviously 44 Magnums and uh, they're not the hottest loaded 44 Magnums due to this uh, revolver's age, but they are still plenty sufficient, at least in my opinion and uh, like I said it's another bit of a debate for another video. Now the primary reason why I do like running a double action revolver is primarily because when it is when we do talk about bear defense or even moose defense just wildlife protection uh, there's a lot of things that can go wrong with semi-auto handguns and primarily user induced problems so when it comes to like the kiss factor or keep it uh, keep it simple stupid or keep it stupid simple, either way you like to say it, um, the revolver is really quite a fantastic option because there is really nothing that the user can do to impede the function of this firearm, especially as a double action. You know, if you draw this handgun and you go to fire it, um, you know, there's no such thing as limp wristing it. There's no magazine to drop or eject. And there's really nothing that you can do to induce a failure in a revolver uh, as far as a user standpoint goes. In addition to that, Two, if say you come across a bad round and you you know drop your hammer and it doesn't go bang, all you have to do is pull the trigger again. Because it is a double action, all you have to do is just keep pulling the trigger until it goes bang again. Now hopefully, you know, you don't run out of ammo and obviously capacity is the biggest downside to the revolver. But at the same time too, uh, once again, another, we'll dig into this a little bit deeper in other videos, but essentially the nice thing about running a revolver is it's a very very simple mechanism as far as a user standpoint. All you have to do is draw it. All you have to do as a user is draw it and pull the trigger. That's literally all you have to do and it works 100% uh, of the time. There's no limp wristing it, there's no dropping the magazines, there's no you know getting in, in the way of the slide and if any Thing occurs where a gun or a bullet does not go off with a double action revolver all you have to do is pull that trigger again and it'll cycle to the next round unlike in a semi-auto where you have to jack the round out of the action and you know maybe even the, remove the magazine and you know fiddle with it so that's that's some of the reason why I do run the revolver and why I like revolvers in general for wilderness self-defense um, of course, once again, I still use the Desert Eagle and I have a handful of semi-auto handguns that I do occasionally rotate, but most of the time I do run a revolver. So that's essentially the base reasoning for the revolver. Now my setup, now to go to my setup. So of course, as you guys have probably seen it in many videos, what I usually run is a drop leg rig. And uh, this is not my favorite, it's far from the best. It kind of looks a little bit jankety. Hopefully you guys can see it there. I am still working on finding a better drop leg system. Unfortunately, with revolvers especially, there's not a lot of drop leg options out there. So it kind of is hard to find a good one. But if you guys do have any suggestions, I would definitely appreciate it. For now, this is the one that I'm running because essentially it's like everyone else that I can find. Hopefully in the near future, I can find something a little bit better. I would like 
a kydex or plastic option more than the nylon because i find that the nylon does tend to loosen up a little bit but of course then you just have to retighten it but as far as it goes i do like the drop leg option because it gives my belt more clearance so if i'm running you know like a hatchet a saw uh, survival kit, you know, all these different things that I usually run on my belt. Having the revolver right there, it kind of gets it off the belt, but still very close. And I can just put my hand right there, obviously draw the gun, use it if I need to, and so on and so forth. So it's still very quick for me. And uh, it is a little bit different than a chest rig, but the primary reason why I chose not to run a chest rig with the revolver is because, once again, I do have the chest rig for the Desert Eagle if I wanna run a chest rig. And two, I actually am not the largest fan of chest rigs because this space, as you guys know, is usually, or as some of my original viewers will know, is usually where I run my uh, neck knives. So I can't really run a neck knife and have a proper, um, and have a proper, uh, and have a proper chest holster. So uh, I do have the knife that is usually attached to the chest rig, which is the uh, 3DK MAK to kind of make up for not having a neck knife, but you can't necessarily, you know, have any neck knife there. So it's nice occasionally when, depending on my loadout and how exactly I want to run my setup, it's nice to have the option to have a um, drop leg so that I have my chest cleared. Also, sometimes it's a little bit easier to run backpacks with having the handgun down here as opposed to up here. And it's also, I found sometimes a little bit more comfortable because with the uh, chest rig, a lot of the weight is being put on one shoulder. So uh, once again, if you're running something like a backpack that has existing weight and then you put more weight on that other shoulder, it just uh, tends to fatigue out that shoulder a little bit faster. Whereas this is primarily suspended off my belt or off my hips. And then of course, a little bit of it is suspended by my leg. So I found in hiking like 10 miles uh, the chest rig is a little bit less comfortable than running the uh, the drop leg rig so that's another reason I like to run it as well now let's talk about additional ammo so I'll do a little bit of a close-up here but of course I don't think that there's any way to be slick or trick when it comes to reloading a revolver yeah so more so the reason I carry extra ammo is more as a, I just spent whatever amount of rounds, say I shot all six rounds at a bear and I still want extra ammo. This is definitely not, like I said, some combat reload where I'm expecting to shoot a bear six times, then pop another six rounds in and shoot it again. Ultimately uh, with a revolver, I'm going to shoot six rounds and then that's basically the end. If I didn't do a good job killing the animal, then uh, it's basically game over. So. For me, there's no realistic, I'm not gonna try to whip out a speed loader or moon clips or something to try to shoot or try to get a tactical reload. I don't think that's necessarily very tenable. But what I do carry, if I do need to reload the handgun for whatever reason, uh, I carry basically, it's one of these old school, very old school um, MGM, I think it is, or M, I think it's MGM case guards and I don't know if they still make these anymore this one is quite old but basically it carries 18 rounds in a little deck system as you guys can probably see here and essentially what you do if you want a round is you just press there and the round comes right out so that's essentially how I do it of course you guys can see there those are some of my self-defense rounds um, most of what is in here is buffalo bore uh, these are 270 grain uh, hard cast lead copper jacketed rounds for those wondering but yeah so essentially if say i wanted six rounds i would just press these down to get six <coughs> and then i would just grab them off the deck so once again this is not some type of like tactical reload super fast but this is very uh very minimalistic for me. It's pretty lightweight and 18 rounds for me is more than enough. Uh, 44, especially being that I'm probably not really going to have to reload. Um, so having 18 in here plus the six that are usually in the gun, obviously remove them for safety of the video. But uh, then I usually just slip that in one of my cargo pockets, like you guys can see there, and it just tucks away. And I have additional 
few cylinders worth of extra ammo should I need it, should anything occur or happen where I do need to uh, reload the revolver after expending six rounds. So I do like to have a little bit of extra ammo for what it's worth, but realistically, once again, for carrying a self-defense or wilderness protection revolver, I'm not trying to go for any type of speed load or any type of, you know, for any type of speed load or any type of, you know, like mid combat kind of reload. Obviously with wilderness self-defense situations, even if you have a magazine fed handgun, the probability of you actually being able to reload on the fly is probably not that likely just because moose, bears, wolves, if they do decide to attack you, it's such a fast action that you're likely gonna get off whatever rounds you can. And then um, the basically it's either settled or you've lost. So realistically, in my opinion, I'm not that worried about having a slow reload. Um, realistically, I'm not that worried about having a slow reload and I'm not uh, too concerned about trying to make like some type of tactical or combat load with the gun. Obviously if I was, I'd probably run like speed loaders or mood clips, but uh, yeah, that's just the way I have it. And it's not super fancy. I know some people have, you know, bandoliers on their belts or they have bandoliers or some type of, you know, ammo storage on the actual holster itself. And those are all cool systems, but realistically this just uh, carries 18 rounds in a really compact package and it just stays out of my way. I mean, most of the time I forget I even have the extra ammunition there. So essentially that is how I run my revolver. Uh, like I said, I do want to get another uh, holster for this. That's better, but I still do really want a drop leg holster. It's just about finding the right one that gives me the adequate uh, amount of security and the amount of ease of draw. And once again, most of the holsters on the market for revolvers look just like this. So they're not great. And that's why I really haven't uh, got anything else. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Like I said, I plan to do a few more uh, bear related or bear defense related videos here in the coming future or this summer as a whole. So hopefully you stay tuned for those. Uh, I'm definitely very interested in talking about bear defense and you know explaining why I think what I think, the types of calibers that I usually carry and so on and so forth. So hopefully you guys, uh, Hopefully you guys stay tuned for those videos. I'm pretty excited about them and I look forward to being able to discuss more about bear defense handguns and why I carry what I carry and why I don't carry what I don't carry. Okay guys, as always, God bless and I'm out.